Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to talk about the useful resources that investors are frequently known to use. So I'll start off talking about the data we need to collect as investors, and then I'll talk about the best resources that we have, specifically in the US, and then I'll wrap up by discussing how data is being analyzed now. When we're determining whether to invest in a security, we want to have as much information as possible. We break that information into three groupings, economic or macro level information, industry level information, and firm level information. The first, macro level information, refers to statistics like expected GDP growth rates, investor sentiment, uh, purchasing manager index or PMI index, which is a measure of expected economic trends in manufacturing based on a survey of purchasing managers, and other indices. Industry level information relates to industry outlook, which comes from a variety of industry specific resources and analysts. Finally, we also want firm level information. That includes the risks the firm faces, the characteristics of the firm, and the corporate governance of the firm. Now, let's talk about the sources of this information. We'll start with the macro level information. Now, you can get information about current and expected future economic conditions from things like economic letters posted by large cap banks, such as Bank of America or Goldman Sachs. You can also get macro information from sources like news wires or even the economic report of the president. So if I pull up the economic report of the president, you can see what we have here. We have the 24, the 23, the 22, basically every economic report of the president. This thing is issued annually. And if I open it up, you can see it's quite extensive. It's extensive. It's about a 500 page document. And it details essentially uh, where we are, where the US economy is, where we're likely to be headed, every, you know, a, a broad view of what's going on in the US economy. Now, one of the last resources we have is the Federal Reserve's Beige Book. And the Beige Book is put out by the Fed eight times a year. When it comes out, typically we're gonna see a large movement in the markets as a whole. And so this is why we typically look for the, the release of the Beige Book, usually at two o'clock uh, after the Fed meets. On the industry level, there are often trade publications available. For example, Computer World is a publication dedicated to IT news and expected changes in the tech industry. Other publications uh, provide information on other sectors. So Public Utilities Fortnightly, which is a very old name, uh, they provide information on public utilities, obviously. On the firm level, the best and the most complete information you can get in a single source is going to be the Edgar database. And I say that because they have all of the public information that firms are required to post. Uh, this includes the big annual report, also known as the 10K. It also has the quarterly filings, a lot of other filings. But if you're looking for a, a one-stop shop for primary resources, the Edgar website is probably going to be your best source. It takes a lot of the, the data from uh, firms, and it posts all of that information on one database. So for example, if I'm on the Edgar database, also known as sec.gov, let's say I want to look up Apple's filings. So AAPL is their ticker symbol. Here I have most of the more important filings, so I can look up their most recent 10K, which was November of 2023. And here it is. This is the annual report that Apple puts out. And if we need to find out some information that would only be in the 10K, well, this is where we would typically go to find it. There's other resources we can go to find this information, but this is a pretty straightforward one. There are many other periodicals you can use to gather information about firms. The Economist and Forbes are good resources for macro conditions, while newspapers like the Financial Times and Wall Street Journal are good daily publications that focus on the financial sector and business conditions around the world. You can read uh, the Wall Street Journal as a student for a very small amount. I believe it's, it's about a dollar a month as a trial for a student. 
uh, Financial Times is going to be a bit more expensive. I historically have had the Financial Times most of my career, uh, mostly because I do believe it's the best source for international information. But the Wall Street Journal is much more U.S. focused, and they also they offer student discounts. So if you're looking for a good financial publication, that would be my first stop. Now there are also subscription sources that you can use to collect data. For example. Mergent has a huge amount of data on a huge number of executives from around the world, and it collects information on more firms than practically any other service. Bloomberg, which we'll use obviously in this class, uh, the Bloomberg terminal is kind of a, a one-stop shop for information. Uh, Bloomberg is in my, as far as I can tell you, uh, the most complete resource for data that would be relevant to investors. It contains, contains most of the, da the data that these other resources collect, and it allows you to easily download that data, like S1s or 10Ks. Uh, there are competitors to Bloomberg, like Thomson Reuters Icon platform. Uh, Icon is significantly cheaper than Bloomberg, uh, which runs around oh, $21,000 a year for a terminal. Uh, the drawback is that the last time I looked, once you add up all the features to Icon that make it comparable to Bloomberg, the price ends up being about the same as a Bloomberg terminal. Okay, the last good resource, and these really should be your first shop if you're looking for just very quick, quick information, uh, are financial portals. And these financial portals are one-stop shops for very basic information. Uh, so if you want information on managed funds, like mutual funds or ETFs, Morningstar would be a fantastic place to go. Typically what you do is you just go to Morningstar and you look up, oh, let's say any fund you want, and you'll be able to see it somewhere over here. And here we have just a random value fund. So uh, if you wanted to, you could take a look at Oh, all kinds of things related to different funds. Uh, I would say Morningstar is going to be the best resource we have uh, that's free for mutual funds. Another good website that we have is Finviz. And you've probably had less exposure to Finviz in the past, but Finviz is very good for uh, specifically its stock screener. So if I go to the Finviz website, you know, we can look up information on any publicly traded stock in the US, you know, same as Morningstar, but if I wanted to screen, screen securities that met certain criteria, this is definitely going to be the best free screener that I know of. So let me just open all of these. If you wanted to look for securities that meet certain characteristics, like a PE ratio, uh, that is very high, and the stock has to be in the basic material sector. Well, here we go. We have 19 of these as of the time that I'm recording this video. So uh, basically, if you're looking for the best free screener as you look for individual securities that meet certain criteria, Finviz is the way to go. Probably the most widely used resource on this page is going to be Yahoo Finance. And Yahoo Finance, uh, it's quick, it's easy. It also provides some free data if you ever use Python. Uh, so it's it's kind of like your first go-to if you're looking up information on a stock. So typically what we would do is just go to uh, their bar and we just look up a stock or ticker symbol. And this has been a bad day for Apple. I'm recording this shortly, uh, well, late in the summer. And you can definitely see their stock price. We can see their historical return data on the historical data tab. Uh, we can get a sense of what the company does on the profile tab. And we can see their management. Uh, we can also get historical financial data going back a few years. And we can also see what analysts think about this stock. So, you know, here's the analyst recommendations from all 42, or in this case, 38 analysts who are following the stock as of uh, the time that I'm recording this video. Okay, so those are pretty much the big three as far as financial portals go. The Motley Fool and Zacks, they provide some other information, but they're not nearly as, as commonly used as the first three on this page. Now, 
All of these resources I've mentioned are used by analysts to put together what we call analyst reports. Sometimes we'll call these research reports or brokerage reports. Uh, now these are reports that provide investors with value relevant information about a security and they allow an analyst to provide what's called a target price, which represents the price the stock should be worth one year from today. The reports detail much of what I have discussed so far, and any client of a broker can typically get access to these reports. You're going to see a lot of these reports in this class and any other investment class you take. Uh, now, these, I mean, they're going to include just about as much value relevant information as a, an analyst can hope to put in. I mean, I'm going to ask you guys to essentially build one of these on your own in a couple of weeks. And, you know, we just collect a bunch of information, uh, analyze, synthesize that data, and then assign an intrinsic value, calculate the target price based on that intrinsic value, and compare our intrinsic value to our current share price, and that'll tell us what we should recommend. Okay, so before I wrap this video up, I do have a couple questions. These are CFA, or I guess this one is not CFA, question, but it's a good question to ask. So you're looking for data on securities that meet specific requirements. Which of the following would be the best website to use? Morningstar, Finviz, Edgar, or Yahoo Finance? Well, the correct answer here is going to be Finviz. And the reason Finviz is the correct answer here is that if we're looking for securities that meet specific requirements, the best way to find those securities is to use a stock screener. So screen based on price to earnings ratio or price to book ratio or earnings per share over the last year, something like that. And there is no better free screener than Finviz. Okay, uh, one final point here. How is investor behavior changing? Because obviously with the rise of AI, investors are starting to change how they search for information, how they use information, how they synthesize information. Uh, more, informa more investors are starting to use AI technology. That is an absolute truth. Uh, I myself use ChatGPT to essentially textually analyze uh, earnings reports, 10Ks to get some information that I might miss. Uh, it's, I mean, that's just become commonplace in the industry now. Now, my ultimate recommendation and my ultimate decision is my own, and it's based on essentially my analysis and my valuation of that stock, but a lot of analysts use AI technology to speed up the analysis process. Uh, if you're looking for an answer to what is better, just letting AI do the work or just using analysts, the truth is there's some pretty good evidence out there that the best way to select stocks is to use AI resources and also analyst judgment. And if you want that, you know, here's the, the actual link uh, to the most recent paper. I believe that just got published in a very, very high end academic journal. Uh, so uh, essentially what I'm trying to get at is AI is becoming prominent for good reason and your best analysts are incorporating AI into their decision-making process, and we should expect that to be the case for a very long time to come. All right, so let's summarize. Websites like Yahoo Finance and Morningstar provide valuable information to investors. Don't forget Finviz either for stock screening. The Bloomberg Terminal is arguably your best one-stop shop for data. Uh, we will use that very, very frequently going forward. A firm's filings with the SEC are publicly available, and you can find that on the SEC's data repository website called Edgar. And analyst reports are written by financial analysts, and they detail the analyst's recommendation about a security, and they're very often backed up by a lot of information that we're going to be collecting in this class. So I'm going to wrap up this video, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.